Hello, my name is Jen Miller, and I am your host today from Flom Publishing, a division of Bayard. And today we're going to be talking and learning about one of our newest resources titled Awaken, Becoming Disciples of the Word. You can utilize this new resource to foster knowledge and love of scripture for teens and adults. This new resource consists of 32 weekly lessons that parallel perfectly right along with the Gospel Weeklies for Children. In just a moment, we're going to be meeting the author, Dr. Joanne Paradise. She is a national speaker and spiritual director who comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Joanne served as a catechetical leader in the Diocese of Pittsburgh for over 32 years, as well as an elementary and high school teacher. She has given retreats to women and parish staff for over 25 years. She is appreciated for her ability to connect God's word with our day-to-day -day lives through storytelling. She's the perfect author for this new program, Awaken. Dr. Joanne, are you with us? I am, and I am so happy to be here. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to begin sharing my screen. So maybe we can dive in a little deeper and you can uh, explain your feelings on when you write about this, uh, this new resource that we have. Here we go. All right. Well, you may be um, asking the question why there's a rope next to my picture on this slide. <laughs> and I wanted to be able to start by sharing uh, uh, some part of a story that I've read called Knots on a Counting Rope. And in that story, a young Native American boy asks his grandfather to repeat the story of his birth. And he says to his grandfather, grandfather, tell me the story again. Tell me the story so I know who I am. And as is the, the whole mission of the Gospel Weeklies is to help children to become familiar with the story of salvation history so that they know who they are as God's child, as a disciple of Christ, and as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so out of that thinking, we wanted to be able to do the same for adults. Now, while adults are um, part certainly of family life, and so as you said, this resource parallels the children's gospel weeklies um, perfectly. It is also intended, if we look at the next slide for audiences that um, may not be connected to that as yet. So for people in uh, adult ministries uh, who work with young adults or for the young adults themselves, small group studies, RCIA, particularly the breaking open of the word, for bulletin inserts for faith formation for the entire parish, mm -hmm. uh, which is the call of the documents, of course, um, for for the and the new general directory of catechesis, which just echoes um, decades and decades of our need to to form adults. Uh, catechist formation, particularly if they're using the gospel weeklies so that they become familiar um, with the Sunday gospels. And for sure, we wanted to emphasize that this has an imprimatur. Uh, it will not have a catechism committee uh, uh, official uh, certification because they do not have a protocol for adult formation. So the imprimatur is, is the highest level of, of this is church teaching that we can receive for these uh, gospel weeklies. And so we will move to the next uh, phase, which begins to talk about um, what it is that the Gospel Weeklies for Adults do. Awaken, becoming uh, the disciples of the word, was an intentionally chosen title 
uh, as we are not only trying to give resource to those who are already familiar with the scriptures, but for those who do not feel comfortable with them, for adults who maybe have never picked up the Bible, or if they have read a part and then said, I don't understand what this means. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to equip young um, adults, parents, adults, to be able to read those scriptures in a way that speaks to them personally. And so um, it follows this format uh, that we look at the Sunday readings. We uh, have an opening prayer that draws from that theme, the thoughts for reflection that will talk about their importance. Um, and then on the flip side, the points to ponder and connecting the gospel to church teaching, which is vitally important um, to talk about the tradition of the church. Uh, and then it reflects the family corner uh, from the children's gospel weeklies and then gives us a closing prayer. So we're going to walk more slowly for that through that by starting with an opening prayer. Now, this is all from one gospel weekly so that you can see the flow that happens as it goes through um, the components of the, uh, the resource. So we begin by asking the Lord for intentional help that has to do with um, the struggle that the Gospels are trying to help us to understand. So this one, for instance, is about um, justice and peace. And, and so we start by, by admitting how difficult it is to hear uh, cries for justice in the world that we live today, and then um, asking the Spirit to come uh, to help us, to help people to, um, to, to be able to get their daily bread. So opening prayer, and then we go right to the scriptures themselves. And that part of the resource is entitled, What You Need to Know. It, it, we didn't have space to write what you need to know to be able to understand what you're reading here. But um, that's the intention of these uh, looks at each of the scriptures. So this is the first reading for that Sunday in Isaiah. And he, now we, we ask you to read the readings from another resource that's listed right there. But um, it tells you that uh, who Isaiah is speaking to, you'll notice that it calls him a prophet right away and says what a prophet is in the Old Testament. And so we've already catechizing, as well as giving them a historical social criticism for the Bible, for this passage, so they understand um, what Isaiah is talking about when he reminds them um, that God wants more than sacrifice, more than worship, and how he thinks differently than we human beings. In the next reading, uh, which is always from the New Testament, we have the letter to the Philippians, and, and it says St. Paul um, is in prison, which is a really important thing to remember uh, when you read these scriptures, and that Paul never met the historical Jesus. Um, his experience of Christ, which means the risen Jesus, completely changed his heart. And, and it tells you um, how that happens when he reads, um, when you read Philippians itself. Um, and, and the struggle that Paul finds himself in uh, while he's locked in prison, thinking about whether they're going to kill him or not. Um, and and he, he positions that as a win-win. So if you're curious about that, you need to read Philippians. And then finally, we go to the gospel reading, which I know is very small here, but we tried to fit it on one screen. And the gospel reading from Matthew uh, is reminding, is, is retelling Jesus is telling the story of um, the laborers in the field and it and the what you need to know begins with a reflection on if you're a union worker or if you work for a daily wage this is a difficult story to read 
but then gives the historical and um, you know the cultural context about how farm workers were paid at the time of Jesus. Uh, and so, um, and who gets chosen to do that work and when they get chosen to do that work. And then at the end, um, it raises uh, the question or the thinking, uh, what, what did those first workers expect when they had labored in the fields for the most hours? So very, um, uh, very critical and important information uh, to be able to understand those readings for that Sunday. As you continue, you'll see thoughts for reflection. And these are so intentionally done. Um, they're done, and, and notice it says thoughts because sometimes it's questions. Sometimes it's a, a, a suggestion about what to do in their own home. And since this gospel uh, invites us to think about the difference between needs and wants, um, we ask them to, to the adults to go through, to make a list, first of all, of their own uh, things that they believe that their family or they themselves need, and then what they want. And then as they walk through their home in the second suggestion with their note, um, they are to, to pay attention to all the things that are wants in their house and not needs. So from that list of saying what they truly need, how many things do they see that um, don't fit in that category? And then it moves them to this final question that says, when you pray the Our Father, what do you mean when you say, give us this day our daily bread? What is daily bread? Is it what we need? Or is it what we want? And so um, you can see how those questions would lead people to, we hope, a new consciousness about, um, about this gospel reading, but particularly an understanding how their gosp the gospels, the word, is all about how they live their life. And so um, if you walk through your own home, there's nothing more uh, that tells about you than your home. So those thoughts for reflection. This is simply a two-sided, one-page uh, resource. And so on the back page, uh, we start with points to ponder. And we specifically um, chose not to use things that described faith intentionally or or more importantly religion because this is meant to get to the heart of spirituality mm -hmm. uh, about your own journey with god your own soul work and so um this begins by asking that question is god fair <laughs> you know and what is the difference between fair and just and how do you see that? And what does that lead you to? So, um, so when that parable, as it gets to the bottom, uh, asks us to examine those differences, it asks us the trust that God will always give us what we need. That's a very different thing um, from what we want. And so you see that then the, the question underneath or the suggestion underneath says, relate Isaiah's words, which were his thoughts are not our thoughts to this parable. And you can see the difference um, that that would make in someone's own personal journey to holiness. Uh, what that means for me when I pray the, the Our Father, or I pray it in the name of my family. So points to ponder is the first part of that um, resource on the second page. And then the second part is connecting the gospel and church teaching. Now, we intentionally, again, I hope you're getting the sense of how intentional we were in creating this resource, um, did not use words like doctrine because for so many people, um, this often makes them uh, anxious 
or or uh, elicits a feeling of, in them that where uh, that the church in particular is doing their thinking for them, which is never what the church wants to do. Uh, people are asked to form their own consciences. So this is connecting the gospel to part of the teaching of the church that is related to uh, what it is that we've just talked about in our own spiritual journey. You know, are we angry at God often for not giving us what we want? And what is just wage and human dignity? Uh, and how does that apply to my life situation or how I live in community? And so it begins by giving um, a, a little bit of his, his, his cultural context by um, talking about the relationship between justice and peace. It talks about how um, that only when people experience peace, which in that day meant no one was trying to take their land, um, that they could uh, provide for the needs of others, for their own families and others. And so we move that discussion directly to um, Pope Paul VI's call to action, uh, which is found in the catechism. Uh, and it says that, that we clearly have to be aware of um, the, the fairness of wage. Now, in church language, that means equitable remuneration, mm -hmm. uh, which helps families to lead a worthy life on all those levels, material, social, cultural, and spiritual, uh, and to get assistance when they need it. And so, do you see how intimately that church teaching was connected to the the discussion in the points to ponder between justice and fairness and with all of the Sunday readings about what God has been calling us to from the time of the prophets. And so um, it, it concludes with this little um, paragraph that says, so there are people who say religion has nothing to do with my life. Hmm. Well, this parable is the clearest example of the truth that our faith touches every part of our life, even our wallets. And so um, I hope that you can see how uh, we have so, so tried to raise people's consciousness to awaken in them a sense to know more, but um, but to ask the questions that 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 would make them think about, well, well, look how how relevant is this to the life I lead? And so there's always a link at the bottom for those of you who are doing catechesis um, on this in a group setting, for instance, like in a um, RCIA process or in a um, small faith community where someone there's a facilitator who can. Um, direct people to other resources that you might be using. You'll see here that we do that to the catechism, where the catechism um, will speak to that issue. Or I would highly recommend to you another resource from Flom that's called Growing in Faith. And Growing in Faith is written by Bill Hipsch, who, um, for those of you in catechesis know, as an incredibly gifted author of of um, theology and spirituality and catechesis. And he has taken the catechism and tried to um, phrase that in language that's more uh, applicable or more, um, uh, it has a sense of being able to reach more people in the way that it um, it speaks and explains. And I, I can can't recommend that resource enough. It comes in six booklets. And so they're going to point to exactly the booklet that you need and um, the session number that, um, that that conversation happens in. I, you know, for catechist formation, uh, if you're um, someone who is heeding the documents and your, your parish is really about forming catechists, having Zoom discussions or, or 
small discussions after mass one Sunday for the month that could use those um, booklets to help them to move deeper or to clarify something that they've read in, in the Awaken resource would be such a gift to the community. So after the church teaching and connecting that to the gospel, we have the family corner, which is the very same one you will find in the children's weekly resource so that there's a family prayer for the whole week and a question that can be uh, spoken with uh, spoken and reflected on with your children. And then finally, a closing prayer that um, is always again connected to the theme of uh, the gospels and the readings. Um, we're asking the Holy Spirit here to change our hearts like the Spirit did St. Paul's. Um, and then, you know, admits that it's so hard to hear uh, God's voice with so many other voices telling us what to believe. Mm -hmm. So give us the ears to hear. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, and again, we just <laughs> are reminding people that everything they read in this resource has been um, given a, a stamp of approval that it's all Catholic teaching by um, the Bishop McManus, who is the Bishop of Worcester, mm -hmm. and um, takes very seriously um, every comma and period, actually, that um, is in the resource. So that's what it is. That's what we're so excited about, Jennifer. Absolutely. And, and the excitement is uh, is definitely there and growing as well. And it's just such a perfect resource. And we all grow at different levels. And I really feel that this resource will touch upon so many um, you know, parishioners out there um, in all of our parishes. Um, the pricing uh, is as low as $7.50 per person per year. There's 32 weekly lessons and it's uh, tier pricing, as you can see. Um, and so, Dr. Dr. Joanne, I, I really, really enjoyed so much uh, your presentation and getting to work with you and meeting you. And I just look so forward to working with you uh, forward in the future and um and working with you with your project awaken so thank you so much jennifer you're so welcome you're so welcome and thank you all for joining us if you have additional questions in regards to awaken please be sure to reach out to your sales representative or you can call our customer service number at 1-800-543-4383 thank you and have a wonderful wonderful day